Hi, I was talking to a client this week and he said, I have had an epiphany. I said, oh, fantastic, I love epiphanies. What is it? He said, I've realised that when I imagine scary things, I feel scared. I thought, that's fantastic. That is, it's almost like poetry. It synthesises down to a very simple statement what feels like a, a, a huge, complex problem. It's not a complex problem. It's simply, when you imagine scary things, you feel scared. And interestingly, I'll also add, the scary things typically are in the future. They're catastrophes, they're bad outcomes, they're negative thoughts, but they're typically uh, based in the future. Now, if we expand this sort of simple epiphany a little bit more, what happens is that in unconscious or subconscious brain, a thought which has been practiced triggers an anxiety response, a physiological, a physiological response um, that makes you feel the physiology of anxiety in your body. Your brain has to make sense of that experience and it jumps to the first conclusion it can find that makes any sense to this experience. Now, those conclusions are, are typically extremely wrong, but your brain is satisfied as soon as it has a simple explanation. And we can think of this as a worry. Yeah, but what if that happens? But what if that happens? And then we now have a circuit. Original triggering, but now we have uh, a worry that causes and responds to the feeling of anxiety and it just goes around like that. And the, the, the interesting thing is, none of it is accurate. Uh, it's very, very, very rare that a negative anxiety provoking thought is genuinely accurate. I mean, I would say an accurate negative anxiety provoking thought would be, um, you know, I'm hanging off this cliff on a rope. The rope doesn't look very good. It might fail and I might fall. That is a genuine, I think, um, situation where anxiety, or well, certainly the emotion of fear, is appropriate. But if you're lying in bed, if you're walking to the shops, if you're just going for a walk with the dog, anxiety is not appropriate. If you're just, you know, being around the house, anxiety is entirely inappropriate. So we end up with this loop that just kind of keeps kicking in, giving us this feeling of anxiety. We tend to believe that what our body does and what our brain tells us is valid. And that's the problem that we always have in therapy. Convincing the client that just because you feel something doesn't make it true. Just because your brain can come up with some crackpot story about why you need to be anxious doesn't make it true. Anxiety is basically imagining something frightening and feeling frightened. And once we've said that, the, the strategy then becomes obvious, right? We have to stop imagining scary things. Well, how do we do that? Well, typically we go through a process of retraining the brain using cognitive behavior therapy techniques and active self-help to stop giving you scary thoughts. If, if you stop having scary thoughts, you stop feeling scared. Your brain therefore no longer has to give you random kind of weird stories as to why you're feeling scared. And that then reduces your anxiety. And you know, if you put some effort into it, it goes pretty quick. Anxiety is extremely treatable. So if you want to know more about how to get on the path to stop imagining scary things and therefore feeling scared, I would suggest that you start with Anxiety Wizard. It's a good um, act of self-help CBT program that I've developed and it will give you all the tools that you need to stop imagining scary things. Thanks for taking time to watch and listen. I hope you find this epiphany interesting. I definitely would suggest that you have a think about it. Don't discount it because it's simple, because sometimes a line of poetry is very simple, but encapsulates, you know, a complex kind of idea. And I think this, this epiphany that my client had was a stroke of genius. So once again, thank you for that.